When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. With you and I, the future is bright. Do online meetings make you sleepy, grumpy, cause headaches or nausea? You may be suffering from Zoom fatigue. The medicine you need is J Man Speaks. Let's go! This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero with J Man Speak. J Man to the rescue! There's no sleeping in this room. Edutainment. High energy. Yahoo! Wake up. Wake up. Your head's going to explode. Ooh. Yeah. Ah! Refreshingly authentic. Come with me if you want to live. Side effects will include extreme joy or euphoria, enhanced learning, increased energy and motivation, and feelings of invincibility. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks, and welcome to a team Friday, that's right. <laughs> 18 Friday, Ask the Experts Anything Meaningful Friday. Today we have a very special guest. We're talking about how to retire in real estate. And folks, this is not a get-rich-quick scheme. So if that's what you were looking for, turn it off right now. Uh, we're going to be talking about how hard work and dedication and having a plan and an expert by your side can help you to really achieve financial freedom, whatever that means to you, because everybody's definition of that is different. So it is my pleasure to introduce Anne Peck. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Anne. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Round of applause for you. <laughs> uh, why don't we just, let's get right into it. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background. Uh, what I did like is like we had a conversation uh, about financial planning and I'm like that you have been in real estate and also an appraiser. So you know what it's like you know what the roller coaster of income is the ebbs and flows everybody likes the flows but nobody talks about the ebbs and how to how to really financially plan for that so 
Tell exactly. Me. So I am a financial advisor at Mass Mutual. And before that, I had been a real estate agent for, I just figured out, about 25 years. And wow. also, um, I was a real estate appraiser. I started doing that before sales. So I really do have a, a very good understanding of what agents go through and how difficult it can be to even set aside the time to do any planning or thinking it's so easy to think, oh, in a couple of years, when I reach this point, then I'll do something. And um, that's tempting, but it's dangerous too, because as we all know, um, 10, 20, 25 years goes like that. And you can look back and say, well, if I want to retire for two years when I'm 90, I'm all set. But other than that, you know. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, 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 it's such a unique industry and in that so many other people, you, you know, especially talking about here in Rochester, they went to work, they went to work for Kodak for years and they retire and get a pension or General Motors or, or wherever it is, you work someplace, you contribute to that 401k because the company has it already set up for you. You just put that on autopilot and then hopefully at the end of your time there, you have something. In real estate, that's not the case. Absolutely. There's, there's, there's no realtor pension plan that we get <laughs> at, at a certain age or a certain amount of years in the business. No, that pension plan is just keep selling, just keep selling. Um, it's like Dory from, you know, just keep selling, just keep selling. <laughs> That's not a good strategy for success. And we always like to say, you know, when you build a business and you have a plan, then you can start planning for your retirement. Some people still have a job in real estate, but own their own business. Every day they wake up unemployed. They don't know where their money's coming from. They don't know where their money's going. And they don't have their money working for them. So let, let's talk about, you know, let's talk about taxes because that's for sure. Let's well, talk about that. that definitely is what I think of as being the, um, the iceberg in the water in any type of plan. When you look at your traditional 401ks where people are putting in money, um, um, they're, they're saving on taxes short term for that that little bit of money for the pleasure of paying a lot of tax on all the growth down the line in retirement and that made sense back in in the 80s when this came to plan when we had all these different um tax brackets and you could fool around with it and and it made sense and back then tax rates were so high that the anticipation was um, in retirement, your income would be lower and then your tax burden would be lower. Um, I don't know that we can say that's gonna be the case. Um, very often people are still having income in retirement. So um, they still ha have a big nut as far as the responsibility. And if I was a betting woman, I wouldn't say that 20, 30 years from now, our tax rates are going to be lower. <laughs> uh, I would take given, that bet. You know, given like, the world nah, we nah, live in, lower, yeah. you know, I see them go. I don't see how they can't go up, honestly. So maybe that um, deferral of tax isn't the best idea. And all these, any kind of plan is going to be completely individualized because no two people have the same road. They right. don't have the same goals. They don't have the same means. They don't have the same situation. Um, if you're a self-employed real estate agent, um, sole income, you're gonna have to look at things and, and maybe find a strategy or a product that's gonna serve up multiple needs. And there are things like that out there, but that's, that's an individual conversation. Right. So well, let's, let's yes, talk about just kind of, I, I think real estate agents, we like rules in a way, right? Where we could say, okay, general rule of thumb is if I, like if I'm a brand new agent and that's, that's part of the, the challenge is our industry has a low barrier of entry, right? At two weeks from now, you could have your real estate license with no business training, no marketing, no sales, 
no business plan, Listen. no marketing plan, no economic forecast, none of that. Just ready to go. And then nobody told you that, hey, it's gross. We get paid ten ninety nine, and uh, you got to pay taxes out of that, folks. It's not like I'm rich, right? I'm rich. Oh no, living commission to commission instead of paycheck to paycheck, kind of the same thing. What what kind of rules of thumb would you say, like percentages or ratios, if we could? If somebody's just getting started. I would definitely look at you've got to put away X amount for taxes. Because like you said, that is your gross. You're going to have to pay tax on it. It's best not to hope you get a big commission check in April. <laughs> right. You know, that is a strategy sometimes. So please close by April 15th. But thinking, you know, you can't go wrong put, putting, you know, 25, 30% away. If you've got more left over at the end, great. Then you can do something with that. But um and, and that can be tricky for people because if you have a dry few months, it's pretty hard to, to do that. So it comes down to discipline and it comes down to um, living within your, watching your discretionary spending, living within your means, and then, you know, your lifestyle can, can increase as your means do rather than doing the opposite worse, that right. doesn't end well um spending and then hoping that you know you make enough to pay for it yeah i, I um, think that's um and again i i, I could talk from personal experience because i, I don't want to say all of you out there what i can say is i'm not very disciplined i'm very fortunate that i have a wife that that is and that she puts the plan into place uh but before that it was like i get a commission check and i'm rich and I think right. that that's never going to end. It's almost like winning a lottery. And if you're not disciplined like that, which many of us are not, you can go to your broker owner, go to your managing broker and say, hey, could we set up something where out of every commission check, automatically 25% goes into a separate account, like into a savings account, so that it, you don't see it, you don't touch it, and then it's there for you when you're ready to pay taxes. Because many of us, we can have that – that plan, but you're like, man, I, that new Android just came out though. I wanted to save money this quarter, but I have to have the phone. <laughs> yeah. and, and that is by no means a real estate phenomenon. Right. That That's just the human condition. And I think it's very tempting. And I, I used to do this myself where discipline is a negative, you know, oh, I gotta be disciplined. Ugh, I'm being disciplined. That's horrible. But when you really think about it, it's a pretty powerful, empowering, positive word um, because anything worth doing is going to require a plan and some discipline. You know, if you need to to get in better shape, if you need to watch your eating, whatever it is, it doesn't just happen because you want it to. You have to get a little bit disciplined and and make it a priority. So. Um, making um, your financial future a priority might be a good thing. And, you know, no financial plan makes sense to me unless you've got the foundation covered. And sometimes the foundation isn't all that, you know, it isn't all that sexy and fun, but, right. you know, it's not a plan if you haven't thought about, you know, protection, either something happens to you or, you know, either death, disability, those kind of things. Um, well, let's, it's, it's a concern. Let's talk about yeah. that because we don't want to get too depressing, but guys, uh, you know, it happens. It, you have a statistic here, 15% of people die in the prime of their life. And, and I'm just going to say again for myself, it's, you always feel like I'm invincible. I can't be stopped. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to happen to me. But then tomorrow I could hop in the car and, you know, something tragic happens and, and making sure that your family, your legacy, people that you leave behind are taken care of. What, what are some good strategies for that at the very least, kind of getting started? At, at the very foundational level, if you have people that depend on you to depend on your income, 
it, at the very least have some term insurance in place. It is incredibly affordable. It's pennies on the dollar for what you protect. And it gives you some options down the line. Like if you're if you're really just starting out or you you know you don't feel like you can put a major plan into place, at least doing that and um, having locking locking in your your health because people start to think uh, life insurance is a good idea very often once they're uninsurable or the cost is going to go up because with every decade you know things things happen you know if you're 30 your cholesterol is probably fine but you know at 55 60 it might be an issue and then um, there are a lot of uh, cash value permanent insurances that really do act like much like a Roth IRA would, but you don't have um, a lot of the limitations. You can take the money if you need to um, before 59 and a half without um, the tax penalty. Um, you can take it out tax free. You can pay it back. You cannot pay it back. They're really, I like to think of them as the Swiss Army knife of financial financial products right and few people know that because it's not as, it's not as jazzy but it's foundational and once you do your foundational things then you can as as your business grows and you get more astute and you have more disposable income then you can do all the other stuff and it's great but if you know that your family's protected if something happened to you that you can still have a paycheck if if you become disabled or there's a, a long-term health issue, you can breathe a lot easier. You just can. Yeah. So I don't know. We can't all numbers quoted are for entertainment purposes only. Every, <laughs> every situation is different, but if somebody was fairly healthy, mm -hmm. you know, what would a term let's, let's say for $500,000 fairly healthy person, really healthy person person in their like 30 yeah probably about 30 bucks a month maybe 30 bucks a month 30 you know, dollars a month folks i mean we're talking you probably spend that on a good on lunch coffee. somewhere yeah right right or right or you get two cups of coffee at starbucks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's 30 bucks right there pretty much we don't think anything about insuring our car or our house and if you ask most people, um, what's your, your most valuable asset? Most of the time, they're, thank you. See, you know, <laughs> most people will say their house, their house that, you know, it's got a big old mortgage on it. And it's not, it's okay. your ability to make money. Right. You're earning potential. You are, you are a money-making machine as long as you show up, yeah. you know, you're gonna, just we're just, going to earn millions of dollars in our lifetime. Right. Just to give statistics, right. Uh, Cause I like numbers and I think people do too. If you're making six figures in real estate, a hundred thousand dollars a year, which many agents in this market certainly are in Rochester, but also in the bigger, larger Metro markets, you're making more than that. Okay. So let's just say you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year. In the next 25 years, that's $2.5 million that you are making for your family, for your, you know, for everything to take care of, uh, where if something happened to you, that's $2.5 million that your family doesn't have anymore to take care of themselves, their home, their future, their, their college, everything else that you want to think about that happens in your life um, for you know, pennies, dollar, on the dollar. pennies on the dollar to set it up. And if you, if you had that new year's resolution and you started working out and you're feeling better and you're healthier, Anne and I talked about this too. Like, uh, I wanted to get my life insurance while I'm super healthy because then it's cheaper. If you're cheap, if you're a cheapskate too, it's like you're healthy, it's cheaper. You don't have to worry about it. Don't wait until you get diagnosed with something or something bad happens. You know, it's like Anne said, if once you're uninsurable, it makes it really tough. And then you're watching late night infomercials uh, of these companies that can ensure you. Know right. What. Nobody's plan should be a GoFundMe. <laughs> no. 
you know, I, it, you laugh, but no, I've seen it. It happens. It's like, it happens. Yeah. Like the, um, I want to even, there's a girl recently that used gorilla glue as, <gasps> as like, she got to go fund me <laughs> to get surgery. Really? I'm like, I'm sorry. You can't fix stupid. Something else is going to happen in the future, but I'm not oh, contributing man. to that. That was unbelievable. <laughs> oh man. All right. But what about, let's say, um, another good part of this, cause we're in a strictly commissioned sales business. And if we can't work, you know, and, and the exception to the rule is like, if you have a team and you've built a business that team can produce for you, then you really do have a business that's creating yes. money for you. But if you don't, you're a sole practitioner, you're out there hustling every day, wake up every day, unemployed, going out and getting after it. If you can't work, you can't make money. So what, what about like the long-term care or the, um, you know, I, there, I mentioned the there duck. There are different things. But the duck is we what do, people think about. Yeah, we do have um, disability and that's something, um, you know, much like life insurance, you'd go through, you have the underwriting um, based on your income and such determines what you can, you can get. If you're a high earner, very good idea. Very good idea. And then, um, the long-term term care can just be something as simple as a rider on a whole life policy. Things people don't realize about whole life because, you know, nobody's thinking, oh man, let, let's look at life insurance. You know, it's great. Right. Oh, um, so exciting. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, it Whole life to me isn't so much for the beneficiary. It's for the benefit of the policy owner, because there's money that's going in. Um, it's it's building cash value, so you can pull that out. Say you got a nice juicy 401k, but the market's down, and you don't really want to pull the money out because that's not a good time. But you've got all this money in this other account that isn't market sensitive. This year, let's pull it out of there. Let this come back. So you've, it gives you flexibility that way. You can also put something called a long-term care rider on it. So you will have a pool of God if you have a need. Like I believe um, if two of the five um, daily living activities can't be met, if you can't feed yourself, cognitive issues goes on like that, there is a pool of money that will pay out depending on how you set it up so much a month for um, 25 months or 50 months. It, it supplements, it lets you um, figure other things out, gives you time. Usually if there's a real long-term care need, um, the average is about two and a half years. So you get it covered that way. And if you don't, that it's still growing. If you have no long-term care need, fine, just use the cash. Or you've done great. You don't need that cash. You don't need it for that. You've got a beautiful legacy down the line for someone else. So that's what I'm talking about when I say um, a Swiss army knife of mm -hmm. financial products. And then the other things is like, it's tax-free. It's tax-free um, as a benefit for a beneficiary, you pull it out tax-free. So it balances your tax liability with, you know, your other retirement account because that's taxable to have some that isn't. A blend is going to save you on taxes. And it's also protected, by and large, protected against creditors. And it doesn't count against you on things like a FAFSA form. For those people that have kids approaching college, you'll be really... Um, that's a scary. In tune thing. with that, you know, having two kids, five and ten, I'm like, oh man, I'm like eight years away from the first phase. At least I have a five year break. I feel, I feel for some of the parents that have kids like right after it, one another, like 16, 17, 18. It's like boom, boom, boom. You better, better be planning, or you better hope they get scholarships or get them into yeah. the family business or something. It's I talk about iceberg in the water. Um, <laughs> College education is one, and I'm just worth the cost of admission. You can borrow for college. You cannot borrow for your retirement. So it's very tempting to not put away for your retirement because you're putting your kids through school. 
be cautious because it's a great point. It, it's hard to, um, you know, make up that lost, lost time. It really is. It's a great point. So when it comes to the disability in real estate, cause I feel like I could almost sell real estate no matter what. But I have to think and, about it. What what has to happen in order for me to be determined disabled and not able to sell real estate anymore? Like what 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 has to qualify? I would say that if you know an illness, you know, if you're, you know, God forbid, under chemo and stuff, it's going to be pretty hard to do those things. Cognitive cognitive issues, mobility issues. Yes, you can do some things. But it's can you do all the things required? Like the job that this job, not can you do telemarketing or something where you just need your voice? Can you do um, that? And again, that can be developed and be so personalized that the best thing to know is that it's out there. And if it's something that you have any interest in, then we get together and, and, and dive deeper. Yeah. So let's, uh, and that's, that's for all of you. <laughs> right. So we're, we're, we're going to put all of your contact information in the comments in the description so people can reach out to you, uh, regardless of where you are in the country, if, Anne can't help you, she can find somebody to help you. Um, Absolutely. and my wife, the planner has a good comment here, a brain injury for, for one thing is, is a, a good example of something like that would happen. Exactly. And that, that would bring us in. And I know you're not an estate planner, but it, I'm sure you're partnered with somebody who does estate planning, an attorney uh, of sorts. That's really where you sit down and you discuss all the scenarios. Like if something happens to me and I'm on a ventilator and all this, I want you to keep me on that forever. Okay. Forever. <laughs> Don't ever unplug me. <laughs> this is our discussion we had. You know, it, but if, if not, they might go, oh, well, you know, well, he's suffering. He's not. No, keep me on that bad boy. I don't care. So they might find a solution for whatever's ailing me at that moment. So like discussing your 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 health care decisions that you want to make, your living will, your trusts. Um, and, and we had a we did have an estate attorney on uh, about a month ago. Uh, she's like a subject matter expert for Dr. Phil. And she talked about like as you amass real estate, wealth, and protecting all of your assets, you know, having an LLC for each investment property. And, you know, it, it, it's important that if you are planning financially to also protect all of the wealth that you accumulate with Anne, because um, if something, it could take one person, right? A, a tenant falling down the stairs at a property you own personally in your name. Now they're coming after everybody and everything. Right. And just to have a will, um, that is something that is so easy to put on. A, that's something I got to do. It, it can be on someone's to-do list forever. And it, it's not hard. Just, just do it. Just get it done. You yeah, will so feel better knowing you've put some, put some things into place. It's very satisfying. And it's just, we got enough to worry about. It's one less thing. Well, and, and I think, you know, we tell people to revisit their business plans quarterly. You're not going to look at them once a month at the end of the year and go, this is my goal for next year. Like you should have your, your planning in place. And part of that is, is the financial part of it. It's not just how much money you make. It's what you keep. It's what you keep. Right. It's what you keep. What you keep. And, and y you can have goals, but if you have goals without action, it's, it's just, you know, it's just a pipe dream. You've got to, you've got to take your intentions and your action and put them together and you're going to go forward, whatever it is, whether it's your, your financial plan, your business, your health action is part of that. You got it. Let me give you a round of applause for that. <laughs> so listen, folks, I know it's not the sexiest, most glamorous topic you thought you'd hear about on a Friday morning. But it, this is critical to you, your family, your legacy, your business, everything that you're doing work that you're working so hard for could be gone in an instant 
if you don't protect it and don't plan for it because you if you fail to plan you plan to fail everybody's heard that but it's so true uh and is there anything you want to say in closing we we promise to be right around 30 minutes yep what i want to say is there there's no cost there's no obligation the only thing that someone's going to be out is a half an hour of their time to have a conversation that's really all it is and then you go from there whether it's me or anyone else the important thing is you feel comfortable with the person that you're talking to because much like real estate it's a relationship find a person have a conversation and and get some ideas and go from there all right well thank you so much and we greatly appreciate you uh, we greatly appreciate all of you who are on watching live and if thank you're watching you so this much. on the replay we also thank you um Tune in next week, next Friday, every Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Next week, we'll be talking about CRM, Client Relationship Managers. Uh, we're going to have Eleni Summersfield, I always mess up her last name, from Wise Agent, talking about Wise Agent and how you can stay in touch with your clients and build better relationships. So thank you so much. Thank you again, Anne. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks. Make it a great day. Thanks.